Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us this morning. I hope this finds you well. The weather has certainly uh, turned to fall, so uh, I hope you enjoy some of the nice uh, sunny but brisk weather that uh, we're enjoying. Um, a few reminders uh, this week. There has, if you haven't been uh, watching the news a great deal, there has been an increase in COVID-19 cases in Ottawa specifically, uh, as well as other parts of Ontario. Uh, and so we'd encourage you to please keep up to date with um, whatever the province and health officials are telling us. Um, and to remember to stay uh, vigilant uh, as you look out for your own health and the health of others. And we're all keeping each other safe in this. Uh, and we appreciate um, the huge efforts uh, that each individual has made to, to collectively uh, keep us uh, so, so much safer than we would have otherwise been uh, over these last months. Uh, we would continue to encourage you to donate to the Ottawa Food Bank if you are able to do so, or the Richmond Food Bank if that is more local to you. And if you would like uh, to make a donation to the church at this time, you can uh, continue to do so by e-transfer uh, at muchurch at belnet.ca and Judy, our church secretary, uh, will deposit that into the joint pastoral charge account. Uh, you can also, uh, if you would like to set up ongoing donations like you normally would do with envelopes, uh, you can reach out to Judy um, for uh, a PAR form, uh, that's pre-authorized remittance form, uh, which the United Church uh, has available to you as well. Uh, and that's all I have for today, so please enjoy the service. Uh, thank you. Please join me for our call to worship and lighting of the Christ candle. We are all children of God, and as we join in this time of worship, we acknowledge God's love for each and every one of us. As we join our hearts together, we become aware of the love and peace of God within and around us. In the spirit of oneness, let us enter this time of quiet and reflection as we accept the pure light of God. As we light the Christ candle, may we dedicate ourselves to this time of worship and may we experience God's holy presence around us and within us. May we be filled with unwavering faith in our covenant with God and with each other. Amen. Thank you.
Let us gather our hearts together for a time of prayer. O oh God, we come together now, joining our hearts as one during this sacred hour. With each new worship, we are offered an opportunity to learn about your love as we travel on this sacred journey of life. Your spirit invites us to join the flow that streams around us offering us grace with every step we take. Today, we acknowledge that we are pilgrims in search of the holy land that seems to exist only in our dreams and our visions. And we pray that you will show us the path that leads to theologies of inclusion and away from theologies that separate us from each other. We yearn to hear the radical stories of Jesus that call us to have no part in ideologies that divide humanity instead of uniting us. Spirit of the journey, God of many names and manifestations, help us to boldly open our hearts so that we may be able to venture eagerly forward, accepting all that each new step has to offer. May we believe in a new earth, where we work with the love of healing hands to build a promised new land. May we know that within the journey itself lies our destination and that the new kingdom come on earth waits to be discovered in every heart. Today in this sacred space and time, may we find a place for reflection on how we can embrace the teachings of Jesus in our lives. And hear us now, we pray, as we repeat the ancient prayer of our ancestors. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hi, Nathan here for the segment Children Make a Difference. I would like to say that I have enjoyed sharing different stories with everyone over the past months. 
seeing I am heading back to school, this will be my last time doing this segment. For my farewell, I would like to do something different. I would like to share a few silly riddles. Here we go. Why couldn't Jonah trust the ocean? Because he knew something was fishy about it. Where was Solomon's temple located? On the side of his head. What excuse did Adam give to his children as to why he no longer lived in Eden? Your mother ate us out of house and home. What animal can Noah not trust? The cheetah. Who was the greatest comedian in the Bible? Samson. He brought the house down. Which Bible character had no parents? Joshua, son of Nun. Where is the first baseball game in the Bible? In the big in the big inning, Eve stole first, Adam stole second, Cain struck out Abel, the giants and the angels were rained out. What kind of lights did Noah have on the ark? Floodlights. Lastly, where did Noah keep the bees on the ark? In the archives. This is Nathan signing off, and I hope everyone keeps safe and well. first reading is from Exodus 16, verses 2 through 18. The whole congregation of the Israelites complained against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. The Israelites said to them, If only we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the flesh pots and ate our fill of bread. For you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then the Lord said to Moses, I am going to rain bread from heaven for you and each day the people shall go out and gather enough for that day. In that way I will test them, whether they will follow my instruction or not. On the sixth day, when they prepare what they bring in, it will be twice as much as they gather on other days. So Moses and Aaron said to all the Israelites, In the evening you shall know that it was the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt, and in the morning you shall see the glory of the Lord, because he has heard your complaining against the Lord. For what are we that you complain against us? And Moses said, When the Lord gives you meat to eat in the evening, and your fill of bread in the morning, because the Lord has heard the complaining that you utter against him. What are we? Your complaining is not against us, but against the Lord. Then Moses said to Aaron, Say to the whole congregation of the Israelites, Draw near to the Lord, for he has heard your complaining. And as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the Israelites, they looked toward the wilderness, and the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. The Lord spoke to Moses and said, I have heard the complaining of the Israelites. Say to them, At twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall have your fill of bread. Then you shall know that I am the Lord your God. In the evening quails came up and covered the camp and in the morning there was a layer of dew around the camp. When the layer of dew lifted, there on the surface of the wilderness was a fine flaky substance, as fine as frost on the ground. 
When the Israelites saw it, they said to one another, What is it? For they did not know what it was. Moses said to them, It is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. This is what the Lord has commanded. Gather as much of it as each of you needs, and omer to any person according to the number of persons, all providing for those in their own tent. The Israelites did so. Some gathered more, some gathered less. But when they measured it with an omer, those who gathered much had nothing over, and those who gathered little had no shortage. They gathered as much as each of them needed. The second reading is from Matthew 20, verses 1 through 16. For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the laborers for the usual daily wage, he set them into his vineyard. When he went out about nine o'clock, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace. And he said to them, you also go into the vineyard and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. When he went out again about noon and about three o'clock, he did the same. And about five o'clock, he went out and found others standing around. And he said to them, why are you standing here idle all day? They said to him, because no one has hired us. He said to them, you also go into the vineyard. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his manager, call the laborers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and then going to the first. When those hired about five o'clock came, each of them received the usual daily wage. Now when the first came, they thought they would receive more, but each of them also received the usual daily wage. And when they received it, they grumbled against the landowner, saying, These last worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. But he replied to one of them, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to those the last the same as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do with what I choose with what belongs to me? 
or are you envious because I am generous? So the last will be first, and the first will be last. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts always be aligned with your love. O oh God, you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. The more I read the Bible, the more I understand the depth of Jesus' compassion for other people and how his notion of justice is so very different from our own. Our notion of justice is certainly based upon our own circumstances and by our opinions about what we think other people deserve. And we insist justice has to do with equality. But let's be honest, equality is not a word that is acted out in our society. The two stories we read this morning are perfect reflections of what God's kingdom come on earth should be like if we were truly acting out the commandment to love our neighbor. In Exodus verse 16, it says, This is what God has commanded. Gather as much food as each of you needs. An omer to a person according to the number of persons, all providing for those in their own tents. And then in verse 17 and 18, it says, The Israelites did so, some gathering more, some less. But when they measured it with an omer, those who gathered much had nothing over, and those who gathered little had no shortage. They gathered as much as each needed. For those with curious minds, the omer is an ancient Israelite unit of dry measure used in the era of the temple in Jerusalem. In dry weight, the omer weighed between 1.5 to 1.7 kilograms. Anyhow, in our story in Exodus, everyone received what they needed. Excellent health care, nutritional food, good education, affordable housing, equality in the eyes of the justice system. Everyone received what they needed. And Jesus then drives the point home in Matthew's gospel, and he does it in such a way that it messes with the minds of those listening to his stories. I imagine that his words caused great offense to those who thought they were ethical in their treatment of others. And when we first read the story in Matthew, we might think that hardworking, responsible people are getting shafted, but that isn't the case. They are being treated with fairness and justice. Recapping the story, it says a foreman hired laborers early in the morning, then successively throughout the day at the third, sixth, ninth, and eleventh hours. A twelve-hour day of manual labor, with the burden of the work and the heat of the day, is a long, hard day. Now imagine how unhappy you would be when the foreman settles accounts paying those who had worked a meager one hour the same as those who had worked long, hard 12 hours. Like the laborers back then, I'm sure we would grumble against the landowner. Jesus says to those listening to this story, correct the lens through which you see the way God wants the world to be. The last will be first and the first will be last. And Jesus made this point two chapters earlier, so we can be sure he is reinforcing a point that he wants us to really understand. His point is not one about minimum wage laws, but rather about the compassion of God in comparison to human compassion. The Jesus way is a way of justice and equality in the true sense of the word. The compassionate teachings of Jesus call us to work towards a world that undermines the ruling elite self-serving systemic structures and institutions. And his teachings call us to work towards changing the unjust labor systems in our own society today. Now, both our stories are certainly about people in need. In Exodus, God has compassion on the people and sends them bread and meat so that everyone has their needs met. In Matthew's Gospel, we must ask ourselves, what kind of people are the last to find jobs? 
Nothing in this story suggests that those who were hired last were irresponsible or even just being lazy. They would have been the outcast back then. They would have been the weak, the disabled, and probably the undocumented immigrants. Perhaps maybe the elderly were there, and certainly those who were discriminated against would have been standing in that lineup. For sure, it would have been those in need, those who needed good food, health care, education, affordable homes for their loved ones. Our Bible stories repeatedly call us to treat all people with compassion and to build a just and fair society. And for sure, Matthew's story is about a generous God. We know that. But it is more than that. The landowner is a deeply compassionate man. He feels the anguish of those who waited all day long in the blistering heat and were not hired. He could picture their families waiting for them to come home with enough bread to eat. He knew they might have children in need of medicine to save them. He knew their desperation. He saw it on their faces. And so he decided to pay everyone equally what they needed. This parable calls us to consider what kinds of people are in need in our society. Who needs our compassion the most? And how might we build a society that promises justice for all? The key for me in this story is when the laborers complain and say to the the landowner, you have made those you hired last equal to us. By being compassionate towards those hired last, the landowner has made a clear declaration about their value, their worth. His compassion says there is no room in God's kingdom come on earth for those with a sense of privilege or superiority. The stories of Jesus and the Old Testament writers show uncommon compassion to those who struggle in our society, those who have been denied a dignified place in the system. COVID-19 has certainly brought out into the open the poor working conditions of those on minimum wage in our society. For example, I have to wonder what story Jesus would tell about the workers in our long-term care homes who are given only part-time hours and must go from home to home earning enough for their families while putting their lives at risk. Poor wages and no benefits, even though they work very hard and long hours. What would their story told by Jesus sound like to us? Would he ask us to be generous and not to grumble about minimum wage going up one dollar? I wonder what he would say to us. I think he would tell us to make sure everyone has what they need. Affordable homes, good education, health care, enough food to eat. When we fail to see the needs of other people, may God give us eyes to see and hearts to feel compassion so that we may work towards building God's kingdom come on earth where all people's needs are met equally. Amen.
Let us pray. O oh God, your unconditional love calls us to respect everything that you have created. And as we leave our worship service, may we all promise to honor our covenant with you. It is a covenant that calls us to be guardians of this earth and to see all people as part of the human family. May we always hunger and thirst after your vision of peace that we might live in harmony with each other, respecting our differences and diversity. May we always revere your image of love in those we meet. O oh God, we pray for the determination to do our best to follow the wisdom tradition found in our scriptures. And it is the wisdom tradition that calls us to struggle against institutional injustice and to free those who suffer from systemic oppression and contempt. Help us to comfort and heal others who have been broken by this type of injustice. In our hearts, we hold the vision of people free of poverty and oppression, and we yearn for a world in which all people are treated with dignity and respect. Help us to turn our vision into reality in doing so, we must take a stand and speak up for the least among us. O oh God, give us the courage to follow Jesus without counting the cost. Because we have faith in his teachings, the teachings that call us to not only recognize our common humanity, but to walk in solidarity with the stranger, the outcast, the abused, the hungry, the lonely, and the brokenhearted. As we work toward building a new earth, help us to remember the sacrifice of Jesus so that we may be strong in serving you and our neighbors. Walk with us, O oh God. Increase our compassion for others and help us not to judge. Give us courage, patience, and gentleness of spirit so that others may see your love in the way we live and in the way we treat others. In the awareness of your guidance, O oh God, we welcome new beginnings. We trust in your light to illumine the path so we can build a better world for all people. As we follow divine guidance, we are open to your way and we let go of things that no longer move us forward in our faith and in our recognizing our common humanity. And so as we come to the end of this worship, may we have a renewed sense of gratitude for all life and for your amazing creation. May we see the value in each living thing. And we pray now that your spirit will be with us as we offer up to you in a moment of silence our own concerns and our gratitude. O oh God, give us the strength to live out your call for peace and justice in our world. And remind us that your love and grace reaches beyond our understanding. Give us a spirit of love for the human family, we pray, in the name of Jesus, who is our teacher, in love and peace. Amen.
May the light of God always surround us. May the love of God always embrace us. May the power of God protect us each and every day. And may the Spirit of God watch over us until we meet again. And so it is. Amen.